Hey, I'm Gopar, and this is another video in the Pythonic Design Pattern Series. And today we're going to be talking about the decorator pa pattern. The pros, the cons, how it looks like in Python, and how it looks like in Java for some compare and contrast. So, before we dive into that, what is the adapter? I'm not sorry, not adapter, but decorator pattern. Well, the decorator pattern is similar to the adapter pattern, but not quite. So, the decorator pattern exists for use cases where you have a let's say an object or a class that has certain base functionality and you want to extend that functionality but you don't want to necessarily change the base implementation because the base implementation is already used in the system throughout the system multiple times and you will not you do not want to change the base effect for whatever reason either the base effect shouldn't uh, changing the base effect or adding the features that you want into the base class should not exist there it should exist in a completely new object or or other class or something like that it, so the base implementation should not include the changes because they're not relevant there but you do want to extend on them so what can you do you can either do a few things you can subclass it if it's a class and then extend extend from there inherit it and then just extend normal object oriented pattern or you can use something called a decorator pattern if for whatever reason that option is not possible or you don't want to use that option so decorator just takes in the class and extends on it uh, from the base implementation that is essentially what the decorator pattern is it is pretty straightforward once you actually start using it or see an example so let's go ahead and oh before we dive in let's look at the pros and cons of it okay so what are the pros of using the decorator pattern well for example we are able to extend the class without modifying itself or or by inheritance so there are some people that are against object-oriented programming and there are some people that depend too much on that to extend features and things like that and there are cons when you're too dependent on uh, object-oriented pattern design so using the decorator pattern allows you to avoid that and also makes it so that you can only incrementally make the changes to whatever object you are working with for example if you only want to update one method you can simply overwrite that method in the decorator not overwrite it but extend it by using the base implementation and then adding whatever computation or functionality needed afterwards or before so the decorator makes it makes it easy like that so it's composition over inheritance also the decorator can be reused for multiple classes that have the exa exact uh, interface so it's not just tied to one class it can be tied to uh, several classes as long as they match that specific interface and it is easier to maintain since you're not doing inheritance you only need to add remove functionality in the decorator class that you're doing that you're using so it is a lot in that sense it is easier to maintain okay so now the cons of the decorator pattern well for example using a decorator can result into a lot of similar classes in the system that have similar but very small distinct differences between each each implementation which might make the system a little bit harder and to maintain and to work with since all these specialized little decorators do very similar things but very subtle differences that could be reconciled into one decorator or things like that but the gist of it is that if you do it if, you, if this design goes poorly or you're implementing wrong it can lead to multiple decorators within the system that might make it harder to work with the other one is that it might lead to debugging challenges for example if you have decorators within decorators instead of uh, doing something else uh, properly so for example that might be a use case for using inheritance if you're if you're using decorators to decorate each method or something like that uh, it might, you might think into other solutions and not just the decorator because it can lead to some complexity especially when you look at the track trace you kind of just uh, it might uh, some decorators depending on what language might obscure it or things like that so it might not make it the best thing and also complexity along with that if you have decorators within decorators is kind of you know abstractions and you have to keep a mental mental little uh, structure of how things are going so those are some of the cons for the decorator pattern okay so let's go ahead and look at the Java and Python examples for it okay here is the Java example so we have an interface called coffee that has two methods guess cost and get description and unsurprisingly it is for classes that have to do with coffee so for example I have a very bare bones example called basic coffee which has the get cost which is two dollars and the description is basic coffee so I'm saying that this one implements the coffee interface. Okay, cool. So what if we want to use the decorator pattern because for some reason we can't do inheritance or any other solutions do not work. 
Well, the decorator is where it comes in handy, and we shall create an abstract class called coffee decorator that says, hey, this decorator will implement the coffee interface, but it will, instead of, uh, instead of accepting, for example, the cost and the description via constructors, it will accept a coffee object which it will decorate. So how does that look? Well, let's say we want to create a milk coffee. So we create a milk decorator and say, hey, it takes in the coffee and then we add 50 cents because milk costs extra and you know, to offset the cost, we are going to add 50 cents to the base cost. And then with the description and we are gonna add with milk to it. So that's one way of decorating. So now we can use the milk decorator to get milk coffee. But what if we want to uh, add a decorator with just with sugar, so coffee with sugar. Well, we add a decorator called sugar decorator. Same thing as the milk one, takes in coffee and adds whatever cents or extra it costs to make the sugar coffee. And in the description, we also say with sugar. So how does this all work together? Well, you can look at it right here in the main method. We create a basic coffee and then we spit it out and it will say the base, the base cost of it. But if we want a milk coffee, we, so for example, coffee that is a milk coffee, we wrap it in the milk decorator. So we grab the basic coffee and then we just wrap it with this. And now we will get the new coffee that we want, the milk coffee. But what if we want sugar and milk? Well, that's not a problem. We simply grab that decorated milk coffee and we pass it within the new decorator. So as you can see, you can wrap, you can just stack decorators within decorators because as long as they have the same interface or you take care of it, it will just do what you need it to do. So as you can see, there's very mixed match of things that you can do. And also if you have multiple classes like this, uh, multiple decorators, it can increase the complexity of the code like I was saying. But right here we have we have different variations. We have basic coffee, we have milk coffee, we can do sugar, sugar coffee, we can do sugar milk coffee like this. So that is one way of using the decorator pattern in Java. Okay, here is the Python example. And as you can see, we're not using classes, we're just using functions because we can get away with it because this is Python, it, it simplifies a lot of things. So in this example, we're gonna have a function called basic coffee that returns the price and description. And we're gonna have some decorators. Now the decorators in Python work a little bit different. They don't have to be classes, they're usually functions. And what happens is that these functions take in either a callable, such as like a method, function, or a class, things like that. So anything that it can wrap around, it'll usually just take it, not complain, and do what you and do what you need it to do. So we can say, hey, I'll take in the coffee function, and I'll create a little wrapper uh, method inside a wrapper function. So what this does is I get the original cost and description for the coffee, and then I'll add the price that I need and the description, and then I'll return this new wrapper, this uh, decorator. To it so it all if it this doesn't make sense you'll see the examples right here and which I'll go over in a second and we have an add sugar decorator that does the exact same thing takes in a coffee function callable and then just adds I guess the cost and description and adds the base whatever price it needs and whatever description it needs to add as well so how does this work well we get the basic coffee right here and then we call it so we pass in the price and the and the description. So we're just printing it out. And then we add the decorator, we add the coffee and the description, and then we add shirk, add, add sugar and add milk. So we're uh, like the previous example, we're passing a decorator to a decorator and we shall see that it is correct. So enough talking, let me show you. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, one second, uh, let's see, Python three and decorator. So as you can see, there we go. Basic coffee, basic with milk, and the cost is still right. So this is one way of doing the decorator pattern within within Python. Okay, so what about an, an actual real world use case? Well, an example of that would be that you would wanna create a decorator that measures the time to execute a specific function. So I created a little example of that here. So the decorator is called lock time. It takes in a function and then this wrapper, which is actually going to be doing all the work, is it measures the time. So it starts the timer, executes the function with whatever it needs to do. And then once it finishes, it's going to call the end time and then it's going to print, say, hey, how long did it take by just subtracting the start, uh, the end time minus start. So that should give us the time it took to finish. So if we look at this example that we're logging, it should say doing some work, we sleep for two seconds. 
So in the output, it should be at least two seconds. And if we call it, it we should see it in action. So let's go ahead. Up. Oh, let me do eshell. Let me clear this and then Python real world. And if we call it, I should see it. Oh, import time. So you see, it was called at this time and took a little bit over two seconds uh, to execute. So oh, took a little bit of this amount of time to execute. So that is one way of using a decorator pattern and things like that. But yeah, hopefully that was uh, educational. But yeah, let me know what you think. And remember, knowledge grows when it is shared. Thanks.